So welcome back to another edition of the Sovereign Hub. And today, uh, it's been a long time since we've done a last episode. And I'm very excited for finally getting back, finally be able to speak about the Lord and everything that he's done in this last few, few months and stuff. Um, we also have a special guest today. I'm very, very excited. Someone very close to the family. Um, and they have also got some good news um, that they're going to share with you. So to start off, um, I want to introduce the one and only, the famous, um, <laughs> and uh, such a humble and amazing, lovely uh, lady in my life, um, Auntie and Luan. So mm-hmm. welcome to the podcast. It's finally good to have you here. Thank you, Timothy. This has been a long time coming and has. I am excited to be here with you this morning. Yes, I'm, I'm very excited <laughs> to finally have you here. I'm excited for people to hear what you've got to say. I know you've got a, a lot to say um, on this episode and a mm-hmm. lot about the music, a lot about your journey. And, you know, in fact, well, let's start from there. Just I want you to kind of talk about your experience. And from the start, when did you start kind of doing music for God or where was that inspiration come from? What was the, what's the history about you? <laughs> where did, well, who is, who is Luan? Who is Luan? Okay. So my full name, mm-hmm. Luan Jacinth Modest. Mm-hmm. I then had an addition, Samson. Um, okay. I was married for a while. Um, and my name actually comes from a root that means enjoyment. Mm. And I think, um, I've been that sort of a way growing up, full of life, just loving life, loving laughter. Um, My middle name, my mother always said to me, and I discovered it is in Exodus and in Revelation. It's one of the stones, just since, Mm, which the high priest had on their robes. And it's Mm. one of the stones, the 12 stones mentioned in Revelation uh, for heaven. And so my mother said to me, your name is already there. You have to be there. And, um, And I didn't pay much attention to things until I was a little older coming into my teenage and I would own my name and, you know, own certain thing about it. And of course, um, my parents, my, my surname, modest, you know, means having modesty, um, being humble, um, caring about others. You know, it has a sort of Latin root. So all of those things came together. Um, of course, I was born in Trinidad and Tobago. I have strong Vincentian and Grenadian mm-hmm. roots um, and other islands. And um, all of that mixed. And of course, coming from Trinidad, you know, just the diversity, the cultural mix, the the, the music is mm-hmm. different, um, you know, and, and not just about the carnival. You had a really lovely mix of things growing up. Mm-hmm. And all of those things, I think, influenced my love for music. But I think one thing, and up to this morning, my mom was reminding me, um, you know, she always prayed that her children will be in ministry. Yeah. Um, in the fact that we didn't really have a choice growing up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, my dad was a pastor. My mom okay. was a teacher. Um, she taught us at home until we, you know, we, well, my dad moved around the yeah. Caribbean. And um, what was always interesting is that even with that, we had people always staying with us. So I was born and there was a piano there. And she said that, you know, she prayed that her children, especially her firstborn, that's what she keeps saying to me, would be musical and, um, you know, share the gift. So I think I was about maybe three or so, and I used to listen to the people playing who would stay at our house, and I just played a chorus Mm. one night by air. Of course, Sunday morning, I went to music lessons. Mm. Um, I stuck with it until about grade five or six. And then I just was like, there are many yeah. other interesting things. There, yeah, 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 you're yeah. traveling. You yeah. And I love history. Um, mm. and, and eventually went on to study that, wanted to teach that. Although part of me at first said I was, I was going to follow in my dad's footsteps and be yeah. a, a minister. So being a, <laughs> so being a pastor's child and mm-hmm. obviously having that expectation to, you know, obviously walk in that kind of path but mm-hmm. also having a passion for music and there's carnival, there's so much culture where you're from. So like from when obviously you're young, uh, what, what what's that like? Obviously having that understanding of uh, biblical culture and what, you know, how, mm-hmm. how we should live and stuff like that. But then also having that side of where music is a heavy influence in your culture and, and the stuff that you might have listened to. What's, what, what was that like? What did well, you like, I think, listen to? I think the beauty of it is that mm. I've always said we grew up in a home where every genre of music was played. Okay, yeah. Except yeah, yeah. maybe rock music. 
And of course, we all listened to something. My father really appreciated different types of music. So he didn't fuss with certain things. And my mom, you know, she she was coming from a background where she used to dance and do things in, mm. in the village. And so we just loved everything. And and of course, the Calypso music, the stories behind it, the, mm. the things that you learned just listening to a Calypso. And, and as we were growing up, things that you didn't know, you know, from before you were born, you learned mm. about this from these old Calypsonians and you used to like to listen to how they will do the extempo and all of these things will happen. But of course, you do have to make a balance if you're deciding to be a Christian. Of course, yeah. yeah and yeah. But I did, um, you know, I, I had my years when yeah, I was singing in the church choir, but I was singing other music. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, that's, and, and I don't think the experience harmed me. I think because my parents were around and they, you know, th my father always knew the things we would listen to. He, you know, when we would be listening to Wham or mm. we all went off on Boy George and all these things in the 80s. And he could tell us mm. about the musicians and, you know, yeah, the sort of things. Yeah. And he would say certain things. And then years later, you're thinking, how did you know that? So we, we had that that balance. And even within the Christian circle, mm. you know, some music that people wouldn't listen to or choose not to listen to because it, you know the artist may have been too yeah, upbeat yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah, lyrics. All something. of that happened yeah, yeah. at home. So I think that that added to the love for music. And then, as you say, you know, you had to be doing certain things in church. Yeah. And you had other pastors' kids that were all musicians. Also and yeah. is, is, you know, would you say is that how you also learned the piano, or like obviously you said you learned by ear. Yes. So is that the first time like you learned by ear yes. and you started playing and then yeah. and, 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 and in church? And or? then of course, yes. Mm. So when we when we we started doing exams and stuff and you can read now, yeah. it was expected that you can play the hymns in F major or C major oh, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Stand you know keys. so you can you should yeah. be able to play mm -hmm. now. And and then yeah, it built up because what would happen is, you know, we would go to things and my sister actually sang quite well. Mm. And so I would play. Um, and we went through a myriad of instruments. Um, okay. My mother, yeah. So what did you mom. go with? What instruments did you use to play? <laughs> but I, I dabbled with the, the steel pan for a while. I just don't think I was, anything else was for me. I more the than, than And that's yeah. my mom's instrument now, yeah, actually. Yeah. She's really good with it. She had the trumpet. We had the little quattro things. We mm. had, um, she did drums. She she was in this thing and, you know, so we had a sort of exposure to some, but I don't think any of them stuck. My sister played the recorder. Um, I tried my hand at the guitar. Uh, just the guitar, it wasn't, wasn't, wasn't going to happen. <laughs> yeah, right. it wasn't so I, I stuck no. with the, the sort okay. of piano and, okay. and we were always singing. Um, by default, yeah, you know, and um, and then as I grew older, you in different groups. I joined one choir, you know. I joined yeah. a community thing, and then went on to college. You're in the college yeah. choir. You're in Eastern music, you know. So you're doing different things, different chorales and yeah. stuff. Um, and I just love the group thing. Um, and many weekends, you know, they will call on us as Adventist singers to come and sing for other churches or for programs or for weddings and everything. So mm. in my teenage years, it was a nice little way to get some change. And yeah, some change. Return so. my tithe and say, oh, thank you, Jesus. Did I you, can Did you travel. Play, sing and play in a lot of churches? Did you sing and play, actually, at any I point? I did sing and play at some okay. points. Because um, I don't, back don't think to you see that much, like, <laughs> singing and playing nowadays, do you, really? It's like I, I think the that. last time I, I did that was early... Last year or, or this year, early yeah. this year, in, within the pandemic, I, yeah. I did it for one of my, my young friends who passed away for his funeral. Okay. Um, and yeah, and it's something I would more do at home. Yeah. Very yeah, rarely okay. I do it out, out there, there yeah, because okay. I want people, I, I just, you know. Um, and I think over the years now, I do practice. I think growing up, you didn't like to spend the hours doing the scales. But I realize it's like with anything in life, if you don't put the work in, you won't get practice. anything. Right. So with my singing, with my playing, um, with my teaching, you know, you had to put in the work. You have to plan. You have to do things when I'm doing events, if I'm doing a talk, you know, you just have to do the, the, yeah, the yeah, putting the work. So um, I say to them, don't give up. Um, and I think for me now, I like to push young people and see them really see them to the yeah develop. yeah definitely <laughs> I, I, I can testify to that <laughs> no that's amazing so obviously that that's you've got that whole musical history and experience where you you know come up and brought up in a heavy a musical heavy mm. you know culture and mm. environment so mm. now coming to this point where we are 
you know, we, people have been calling on your name for a long time um, to do the music. Um, when would you say that, obviously you've been singing in church and in for funerals, different stuff like that for, mm -hmm. for a while, but then what brought you to finally decide I'm going to do a project? Because obviously, if, well, people are going to find out that you've obviously mm -hmm. released a project. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll let you talk a bit more about that. But then what was that thing that, you know, made you... <sighs> record and say boom i have to do this now right um mm. so I, I don't think thinking about recording something was you know like in the forefront of my mind yeah yeah um but life experiences mm. start to teach you different things even um starting to sing alone um mm. and solo happened by default so it, with my not so very bright self my father I think i was in an altered state of consciousness rest his soul mm. when i decided to you know on the invitation of my of my boyfriend come to london mm. and um so what started happening a lot of i came here and then suddenly discovered all these people that knew me as a child or my mm. father had done their weddings or whatever and a couple of them, the pastors would say to me, oh, come and go somewhere. Um, you know, I was coming for six months. It's mm. 29 years, right? Mm -hmm. um, come and go with me. And, and sometimes we're on our way, he would say, oh, you're singing. I'm like, what? You know, so what actually happened? I had to call back my friends in Trinidad and say to them, look, I need some tracks. Yeah. Um, fortunately, there was one guy here, um, Selwyn Noel, who would play. And sometimes when we're going around, he would be there. So you had okay. the pianist. And I, wasn't, I didn't have a piano. Or anything mm. so i opted at the time you know at, at the church i was going the gentleman who the older gentleman he said oh i hear you play you know yeah. and one of my friends had said that to me before i was coming so i decided to help out the church and do what you do keep the fingers going as they say and but i was still looking for a group i just i love harmonies i like singing a duet or singing you know my sister and i would sing friends and i always singing together very rarely i sang a solo Okay. growing up and that would be sometimes because my dad wanted a particular song and he, he would say I want you to sing this song yeah special request and, right thing, yeah. so I would do that and and I, I knew I started doing it more at college um, you know but still it would always be like a duet or mm -hmm. something very rarely I would, would do the sing. solo so yeah. then from that point then there would obviously became a demand just as you started getting called upon to do solo mm -hmm. now to then people want to take your music home and experience mm -hmm. it Personally, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I feel like, well, you've obviously gone through a lot as well. Mm -hmm. And do, did that have like play a hand in the music that you do it and did. you wanting to do that? It did. So, yeah. So, like, so three things in, mm -hmm. in leading up to this project. I think, you know, I say my story is full of broken pieces and ugly mm -hmm. truths and just God's grace. Yeah. Um, and I think what triggers certain songs, you, because songs have always been a prayer or, or a hope mm -hmm. for me. You know, um, that that's what I turn to. I always turn to the music. So I, I remember, um, you know, you, you go through, I, I got ill mm -hmm. um, coming into 2000. So yeah. about two years, I had a fall, mm -hmm. drastic fall at work. Um, and I started getting these symptoms and I was never a person to be sick. Okay. You know, the doctor was used to seeing me for a woman's pap smear and your blood pressure. And that was about it. Yeah. I used to have horrible monthly pains, but apart from that, I wasn't ill. Yeah. So I fell down and then the next thing I knew, I'm getting these scars. I'm getting this. I'm having How pain. How did you fall down if you don't remember? What, well, what I think it was happened? the enemy. I was okay. coming down the stairs at the school, at, at yeah. the John Loughborough School, and I don't, know, I don't know what I slipped on. I just toppled okay. down to the just, bottom. Yeah, yeah. And I remember sort of getting up and just saying, amen, I'm alive, dragged myself to the office, and they dealt with a few bruises. Mm -hmm. And I sat there for a while, and because I wasn't feeling mm -hmm. badly, I didn't, you know, I didn't feel yeah. like anything was broken. I just went on with the day. Maybe a bit of adrenaline as well, because maybe right. it was like quite been a so quite I, hard. So I I continued teaching. I yeah. continued doing what I did, and a few days later, I, the, my whole body sort of seized. Oh. So I went to the doctor, and he sent me on to that Chase Farm Hospital. They did some tests. I, I still have the. They said I, I developed a sort of hematoma, and um, I was bruised, but nothing was broken, and mm. that's fine. Yeah. And then was these sort of symptoms developed over the next two years. And finally, they said I was tested for everything from tuberculosis to AIDS yeah. um, under the sun. And I think I was I was we were touring Australia and I was just exhausted, exhausted all the time mm. um, and came back, had the, you know, continued having tests. 
And then they said, yes, you have systemic and discoid lupus. I had to be greedy. Mm. I was half two. And that started a different journey. Because what happened, because of the, the person I am, you know, even though this is happening, once I knew what was happening, I know how to deal with it now. Yeah. But because I tend to be jovial and I don't like to be just down in the dumps, yeah, people you... started to think I was not well. Okay. That I was, on, that I was well. You know, that, you know, she can't be sick. Um, she, what, what is she playing? Um, she needs to, you know, so I was having this sort of harassment at work and a sort of bullying here and people just doubting what is happening. Mm. And as time progressed, it became very difficult for my husband. So I'm now getting this difficulty at home. Mm. I'm having it at work. And, there, you know, and you, you're just thinking, okay, Lord. You know, and mm. in that, you know, the songs, the songs are keeping me going. And yeah, and can I say as well, like obviously in in these times, what I think I want to hear as well from you is how do you honestly get through stuff like that when, <laughs> especially when you have that faith in God, especially when you've sing, you've been singing your whole life, you've, you've, mm-hmm. you know, you're, you're you're in church, you're you're doing these things that people believe to, you know, you should be taken care of, that mm-hmm. you shouldn't run into these things um, that a lot of people think. Mm-hmm. Um, so how is it that you, what did you think? Of, what's going through your mind, you know? Well, it's a the, lot. It's a, the thing is, you, you see, experiences before sort of just make you look at God in a certain way. So when we were growing up, you know, I, I remember that we had about maybe three years where every single one of us were in and out of the hospital. There's five of us. I have a, a one brother, one sister. Um, and I never forget when my dad really got in a terrible, terrible accident. We thought he was going to die. They had to wire his jaw. Wow. And, um, and my sister was like, I'm not eating. My dad is not eating. And, and then over that speech, you know, when my father would come out of the house, he came out, you know, my brother would be in because when he was born, he had something wrong with his feet. So he comes out, my sister is in, my dad is in, my mom comes out, I go in, I have to lose my tonsils. And it was like a cycle of things happening. And then you start, as you get older, you start look, thinking, mm, we survived that. Yeah. But for God. Um, just as we were ready to write an exam, my mom lost her business, we lost our home, um, we're moving into cousins and, you know, all sorts of things are happening. And you have your moments where you actually argue with God. And I think those are the times when you start to really talk to God. You start yeah. to say, OK, so you told me, come, let us reason together. What is this all about? Yeah. And you still go along life kind of OK, because I say to people, God will go to the depths of hell to save you, mm. you know. And so I wasn't always doing the right thing. And, you know, I was a sort of like, I'm in church. I'm in the choir this morning. I'm Mm. doing whatever. I am leading a Mm. talk. I'm doing whatever I have to do or or organize this event. And, of course, when the sun set, I was in the school bazaar, Mm. dancing to every color. So there was. Mm. And, you know, Mm. and but, you know, but my friends, all my my friends knew, you know, Luan is a good Christian girl. She's not doing anything until after Sabbath. Mm. Right. Mm. And they always saw me as this this good girl. And, And then my friends in college were like, but, you know, Luan did these things. But she will drink a beer and eat mm. this and do whatever. So that's but you, you yes, want. and but be, because you you do that struggle. But in all of that, I would always you know I knew every night I, I wouldn't do, pass a day without praying. Mm, mm. You know, even though I think I wasn't doing something that wrong. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, and we, yeah. we can you know make and and in all of it, when all of those things happened, there were always songs that we sang, yeah. which a lot of them have come back into this project. You know, so when after I got ill and then, you know, a few years after that, my my husband grows up, he leaves the house. Mm. Um, I'm there alone. God always put people around you. So so what right? happened at that point? Like what if that if you don't mind talking about mm. like, what happened around the time you get ill? And and, you know, obviously that's a lot of weight on your shoulders right there. And, you know, how like people say. And the Bible talks about, you know, you putting that weight and stress and worry mm-hmm. onto Christ. But mm-hmm. like, how did you do that? Right. So you see what I told you said about stress? Yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I saw this t-shirt the other day and I was like, yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> I love that. Because stress is a killer. Mm. And I remember I had been back home one year and I had done something with my dad and, 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 and this stress and teaching of stress. And, and I was really under it. My eyes were just going red. I remember prior to even getting ill one day, I, I, I was in a difficult work situation and, I, and I'm the kind of person, you know, I would speak my mind. Yeah. But I think the Lord was teaching me to hush 
and let him deal with it. Yeah. Um, and not, not always have to backfire uh, because I was in a position where I couldn't just do that anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think by the time I got ill um, and things started happening at my workplace, I mean, the next thing I was the advocate. I, I went in, I trained as a union rep. I did some legal yeah. stuff, you know, um, to have that on, on, on my back. And then, of mm. course, there goes your 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 spouse goes, mm. and you're just thinking, okay, Lord. But I, in in some of the anger, in some of that, I was still singing. Mm. I would still because that's the only Why? thing that would. Uh, sometimes you sing angry songs. I would sing and I would laugh. Mm. I would find. I remember one one neighbor we were living in Tottenham at the time, and she would sometimes say to me, "What it is you laughing out at like that in the day?" Because mm. I, I'm now home. I couldn't move, you know, for yeah. almost a year. I couldn't go back to work. And as a time, I just, you know, sometimes it's an advert. Sometimes I'm reading something. Sometimes I'm looking at something, yeah. you know. Um, find reason to laugh because, you know, the, the Bible says a merry heart is good for the, for the soul. Yeah. You know, and a broken spirit, when you start, it just saps you. It mm. drains you. It's not good for you. And I think when things happen, you really start to read the Bible with an understanding, you start to sing with a different understanding, different perspective. Because right? I live in it now. Because you, you, you. Oh yeah, I sing that. But mm. what, what, when, when, when I kept saying, you know, oh, for a closer walk with God, Lord, I want to walk closer with you. Yeah, I was singing it. I was leading it. Mm. But now, now oh Jesus, it. please, yeah, you know, you what know is what happening? Means. And when the lupus hit, you know, I had so many experiences where I thought I'm going to mm. die. Mm. You know, I, I remember one that I was really like, you know, I understood. I said, Lord, I understand that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I feel pain in my toenail, in my eyelash, everywhere. everywhere. Gosh. And I, 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 that night, I, I remember early when I was going to die and I called all my family members and I was like, I will see you all in heaven. Mm. This is it. This is it. And I think as I hung up, my husband would call other people, you know, say, pray, pray, pray. Yeah. And I, I sort of cried through the night. I could, the, the pain was just horrendous. And I got up the next morning and, you know, they, they left the house. And, I, you know, we've always had people living with us. Yeah. So my friend said to me, you're okay. I said, because mm-hmm. I was like, I'm up, you know. Yeah. I'm, I'm up. I, I, thought I was dying. I'm up. And I lay on the bed and I sort of looked up in the wardrobe and I was like, Cha, what am I dying for? I haven't even worn that hat yet. <laughs> You know, so I'm not dying. And then <laughs> yeah. while I'm there contemplating, there's still a sort of bitter teary. My sister calls and I said, yeah, morning. She said, oh, I thought you died. I said, oh, no, gosh, because, you know, I was saying, yeah. she said, mommy calls you, you, you. I said, no, I've just decided I'm, I'm, it's not today. It's not it's happening not yet, today. Yeah. Wow. It's not yet. That, and, wow. um, and I've gone through that over and over. Mm. And I think, you know, after the whole sequence where, you're going through all of this and then you, you're going through uh, a separation, which, of course, you, kn- you all know it was a public thing. Mm. Half of the church isn't talking to you. Half are talking to you. Mm. you you're having, you know, everybody has their opinion. Mm. And even though they're seeing, and, and I think it was at that time I really understood when Nelson Mandela says, when wise men are silent, fools mm. multiply. Mm. You know, and you saw the people who you expected some wisdom and some discernment and some common sense in the situation, you know. And then, of mm. course, when I'm, when I'm seeing people, leaders in the church not dealing with principle, I take them up on it. So, of course, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. get a backlash. Yeah. But in that backlash, I could sing. Yeah. I could sing, I could smile. And I, I just had to. Mm. So I think around 2005, six, this is a few, three or f- maybe five years after I got the diagnosis. Yeah. Um, my husband had left. Um, my friend, Sean Mitchell, he's deceased now. And another guy from Tottenham Church, Ian, I think, yeah, they said to me, you just need to put your music out, you know, come, come down to our studio and okay. whatever. So I did a short project. I called it Triumph. Okay. Right. And what, um, what year was this? Like roughly? It's about 2006, I think. 2005 okay. okay. And how long after, after this? Is this in the midst of the, of your like yeah. illness? And yeah, yeah. In the midst of this it, is yeah. in the trial. This yeah, is just yeah. after the, my, my, my ex left and everything. And okay. I, and um and 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 the songs were the songs that were holding me. They were all covers, and they were holding me. Um, you know, was one was in Christ alone, um, midst of the rain, um, sinner saved by grace, and that kind of thing. And they were holding me, and and then I would just go back to the hymns. Mm. And I think in so 2009, yeah, um, my dad died. 
Oh gosh. And of course, you know the the the, the week before his death, we we realized that he was deteriorating. So I was in New York with my sister, and we were thinking, should we just fly home? Um, part of me wished that we did, but we we had decided we we're not going to pay a thousand dollars just to go to Trinidad because Obama and they were in the Caribbean mm. at the time. So we we left it, um, and I went back to came back to London the next day, and that, that was a Tuesday night, a Wednesday, and the Sunday my mom called. She says you need to get a flight. Mm. to come to Trinidad. When I get a flight, the school is opening in the morning. Uh, yeah, the, the, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. So she's calling me the Sunday and I'm, I'm with, I'm actually now, I've gone to see one of my mothers because I had a, an, an adopted father, brother child. He had died earlier in the January. And the same day he, I got that news, they said my dad is in hospital. Okay. So this was a few, so he died, dad then died in April. And I remember getting up the Monday morning and my brother just called and he said, Lou, it's not looking good. Um, they had to do something else with daddy last night. And, but he had already said the week before when we, we, we heard him, he just said, I'm tired, I'm ready to go. And now it's just one right. thing after the other. And it's yeah. Just building and, up and I'm just like, okay. Mm. So he's gone the Monday morning. Mm. When my colleagues come to pick me up, I said, oh, daddy's gone. And they're looking at me like, Okay, so they called the school and said, you know, this is happening. And, and, and we sent the message out to friends. And I think, I was like, really? Okay, Lord, I've just come back. How am I getting home? Because I have yeah. to go home now. This is, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're the first one, everybody, you know, you have to be home. Um, and I never forgot a little miracle God did that morning because I got into school and my colleagues came in and they prayed with me. And one of them said, you know, if you need, I'll buy the ticket for you to go. And I said, mm -mm. And I called the bank. And the Lord had it. A young man answered and he started talking to me. And I said, this is so and so and whatever. And then he suddenly said to me, is this Miss Samson from John Loveborough School? Oh, wow. So I said, yes. It seems I taught his cousin. And I taught somebody else that he knew and he was talking about, they always talking about. He said, what can I do for you? So I said wow. to him, my dad has died. And he said, oh, Miss Samson, don't worry about it. We'll just extend your overdraft wow. and you can get your ticket. And you can, yeah. like, okay, so I come out of the room like, okay, yeah. hallelujah. Yeah, 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 um, provided. Just, get, yeah. Get, getting to go. Um, and, you know, my aunts and they would always, you know, come back into the picture and, and sort you out. But, okay, I'm off now because I just come from America and of course one shopped a lot. Mm. So okay. I, um, <laughs> yeah. So then it was to get the ticket. Yeah. And again this was God in his wisdom. The morning I I am booked for the Wednesday morning now because they in Trinidad you don't keep a buddy. So they okay. bury daddy the next Monday. Oh straight. And yeah. we're just having to plan everything, everything do everything. So quickly. You know, so my, as soon as he died my sister was on a plane and she was home. Uh, my brother lives there so it was fine. And um I, I text Marvin, I think, and I said, oh, I'm going in the morning. For and it worked out that his dad mm. and another friend of ours were on the same flight. Okay. So it actually just made the whole thing easier. Yeah. You know, um, just going. And at the funeral, they started singing some songs that my dad used to sing all the time. Mm. I was in a mess. <laughs> yeah, no, it's gonna hit. And, uh, but then I had to stand up and sing. <laughs> Afterwards, I had to sing for the funeral. Wow! And I, I remember getting up and and just before two or three items before I would sing, mm -hmm. they sang one of the hymns. And the 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 gentleman who was my old college um, professor and choir director, you could have almost heard my dad's voice. The whole church is weeping and bawling. Mm. They do two things, and now I have to get up to sing. Yeah. The song where well, my sister did the, the eulogy first, and we were all sort of holding her, and and I have to get up to sing. And at this point, the whole church is bawling. My mm. little niece, my she doesn't know what is going on. And so you're just uh, hold, hold, and putting it together. My sister in law, my aunts, everybody, people at the front. So I just looked up. I was like, and as I looked forward, you know, I, I saw my old mother, sister Bufong, just sort of, you know, and another friend of mine is like, I just okay. And I got to run. This woman said to me, How did you sing? Mm. for your father and I said to her the two days before the song I was going to sing I couldn't sing it mm. I was weeping I was you know so I actually said to my other friend this is the song you will sing and I will sing yeah, yeah. this one and it has become a come that kind of staple it was he will carry you and so that set me off thinking you know some of the hymns and I said you know I need to sing those hymns okay and so, now it's coming so to so it. what I yeah. did now I I had a old and that very time in America that that Easter I had brought this old songbook you know yeah. with all these old hymns 
And so I called up my conductor and I said, you know, he had done some song tracks for me before. And I said, can you do a couple of tracks for these songs? And okay. I sent him about three or four. I can't even remember how many. So, so to send him to remake them? Like to, in... to do the song tracks. Okay, to do so, the soundtrack. Yeah, yeah, to, right. Yeah. So, okay. And I said, you know, I'm thinking of it in this style. Or I wanted this style. What so, style did you say to him like that you wanted some it Some were jazzy because I, I it's like jazzy. that. Jazzy, okay, I love it. Yeah. Um, and so you wanted some... it to kind of be more of your expression of yes. how you want the song to yes. be, not just the because original. Not just mm. because I liked it, but what it had meant to me. Yeah. You know, and... um. So he did that, and then a couple of other songs came came up. And of course, you know, he, my conductor is overly busy, I'm the most busy person. Mm. So I I had also been playing around again with writing stuff. Okay. Um, or putting music to stuff. So my mom has about three poems, and I really need to put the music to the Still other to two. Those. Yeah. But I had done one, so I'm talking with one of my students who has now come back to sort of work. He, he did music and everything, and I'm saying, listen, I, I need this. And I literally just sing it to him and record it on, you know, those mm-hmm. days of your old little cassette thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I record it, and I sent it to him, and I said, do something for me. All right. Okay. And I came up, and... and um. And then a couple of the hymns came to me and, and I just, I don't know, the Spirit just said to me, call. And I think what happened, how did I end up calling? So I, I had Ken Burton, I had Leon Barclay. Okay. And there was a program that Chiswick Gospel Choir did at the church. And I said, those tracks are fantastic, mm-hmm. you know. And and Julian said, oh, my brother did it. I said, what? Because I had gone to school with her brother and stuff. So I said, I need to be in touch with him. So you reached out to him as well. And I reached out to him. I sent him three songs. Okay. And I just said, you know, this is what I have in mind. And I tell you, when those arrangements came back. It was another story. It was, it was just story. out of this world. Okay. So I, I, and then I had them there sitting. You know how long? And so where are we now? Because obviously, so this is now. So this is <laughs> my dad has died two thousand nine. This is coming yeah. into two thousand ten now. Two thousand ten, okay. right? And I'm putting these songs because I want to sing these songs. Yeah. you know, just sing them. Yeah. So the different arrangements, and I started doing that. Mm. And then coming into about two thousand twelve, one of my friends and I talking. I'm in in America. She said, and her husband's like, so when you're doing a CD, man, you need to. It's like, um, so they're talking around <laughs> and then I, I go and so something I'm saying to, to my aunt and another friend and she's saying, but yeah, you need to do another one. You need to do. Uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And just putting it off. Right. Uh, why and, are you and, putting it off? But though? I don't know. I don't know if, I mean, yeah, I know I did the first project and I was like, yeah, I should. Yeah. And then sometimes you want to and then you just, you're not feeling. And I think because. The lupus had really affected my lungs. Okay. So and sometimes the breathing and, medical, thing, and I'm like. Yeah. This is not going to work, and 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 you know, and sometimes you you lose your confidence a, a bit, mm. you know. So people, when, when I said to somebody, I, I don't feel I could. I was saying to one of my very close friends, she said, "What nonsense you're talking about, you know." Mm. So I said, "Okay." So I started, pretty, and I think about 2012 or coming into 13, I actually went into a studio. I said, yeah. "Okay." So yes, my friend, my friend, this guy who was doing some work, he said, "Oh, I do this stuff with this guy next door, and and um, you can come down." So I went. The environment wasn't the best, but I did some recordings. And then okay. I thought, okay, and I can't remember if I was talking to your dad, how it happened, but we, it came up and, yeah. I, and I came to you guys. With so, this thing. so, like, mm-hmm. did you, is this with the intention to build this whole project that you want to release, or is it just to record a few songs? But I think it was like, you know, it might be a little project. Okay. Again, yeah. like the last one, you <laughs> yeah. know, and so people can hear the music, and mm. these are the songs that I really like. And so where it would go, I wasn't thinking about it at that time. Yeah. So just literally. And then done. that is happening, and then the next thing now we're all losing our jobs, we're being made redundant. I am doing supply teaching. We up in the bush in Brain Tree, and I'm just mm. like, this is this is a lot. So that was not my mind, mm. you know. In between all of that, of course, I'm still singing off and on. Yeah. Um. And we're coming down to points where my health is deteriorating. Yeah. So and, another challenge, right. another barrier. And, and, uh, and then you're not working. You're told you can't work. Yeah. You know, and I'm thinking, but people have my condition. They have no limbs and they're doing this. And, and I remember my GP. I always say this about my GP just to me when I was moaning mm. about it. You know, um, you're a woman of faith. You'll mm. be fine. And I remember, you know, I, there were different songs that came into my head. And I told one day, I need to, to do an arrangement of that song called My Shepherd Will Supply My Needs. Okay. And then I came, I, I got home and I, and I just went to the piano late in the day and I started playing My Jesus As Thou Wilt. And I had the, the song track, I think, by that time. Yeah. And um, 
And I said, well, I will sing this. I'll, I'll sing this for something, you know. And and you just let it sing. But yeah. then, again, as I said, I think I came to you, we talked, we listened to the things, and, and, yeah. and your your uncle started looking at how we can, okay, we can make this work. And then... Yeah, so for those of you who don't know, <laughs> um, obviously... Um, myself and also my uncle David Smart mm-hmm. do music production and mm-hmm. studied that for a while and um, Auntie Luan as mm-hmm. we call her came and you know decided alright she wants to do this project and finally make it happen mm-hmm. um, and my uncle came to me and said you know alright cool let's do this and let's, let's do this properly and let's mm-hmm. make this ha- something that is you know more than what I think you yeah. expected it to be Yeah. Um, and yeah and so obviously now we're here, 2021, <laughs> and after a long <laughs> after a long process, and, and so, then yeah. and then in the pandemic, and, and through the pandemic <laughs> right. as well. Mm. Um, but I think once we started, and and I, you know, I used to say to mom, I praise God for for my young people like you, and and the vision, mm. you know, and and you you reignited. Okay, this is your mindset now. You're going to do this. Just get it done. Mm. You know, and but of course, when we started talking first, it was like, okay, where are we forgetting the funding? So I was sort mm, of like, yeah, okay. we put it on hold. We're going to okay. come back to it. Okay. And and I think last year, and I was sharing this with the church. You know, one of the young ladies' daughters at church, we went to something, and she just said to said to me out of the blue, "Auntie, when are you doing a CD?" And she said mm. it with such vehemence. Yes. You know, so you need to get this done. <laughs> I was like, well, pray for Auntie, please pray. I said, let's see what will happen by the end of the year. Yeah. And I, I always say, God has a way of hearing these conversations that you know. Oh, Oh, yeah, paying yeah. mine too mm. and I think I, I spoke with you guys and said we will see what can happen before mm-hmm. the and then COVID comes everybody shut down mm-hmm. and in the middle I think it was August or something yeah I get this phone call saying there's funding available to do a project um you need to do this you need to follow this process and okay. so forth and see and I was like oh is that from is that from a church so from a church and, perspective yeah. okay, you know okay. so so this this person called me and said that and I said oh Mm. Okay. No excuse. <laughs> right. So I did that. And yeah. then, of course, we, we started to rejoice. Here it's coming because this is, you know, really a costly event here. Mm. And, um, and we started the work. Wow. You know, and then what happened? We had the lockdown because I remember yep. just before we had the, the second lockdown. So we started about October. Yeah, yeah, yeah. November. There was two different yeah. phases, kind of big phases or and, three. And then, then we had the lockdown. And, the, and then, you know, I remember when, when I'm coming back in, it's when my friend's daughter isn't well, so I'm caring for her. Mm, oh, and we yeah, started yeah, the work yeah, yeah, at yeah, the house that, yeah. with all the leaks that I had. And I'm like, oh, Jesus, how am I going to do this? And I think yeah, what wow. I rejoiced most is that God kept me well. I was going to say that as well, actually, mm-hmm. because considering the fact that not only has this project kind of been brewing for many years, but on top of that, when you're kind of getting closer to closer to the end, things are still coming on top of you. This, the, 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 the barriers are still there yeah. to kind of slow you down or yeah. keep you from making this happen. Yeah, but I think there, there's this text that I love in Zephaniah where the Lord says, you know, I rejoice over you with singing. The Lord mm. God is in your midst. He's mighty to bless and he rejoices. So I always think, you know, God is singing over me. He's smiling with me. He's mm. laughing with me. And, you know, when when somebody, I remember when people were in and out, one of my cousins was like, girl, remember you're vulnerable because of course I was shielding. Oh yeah, of right? course. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. you're vulnerable and you sing and do it. I said, listen, Psalms 8 say I will lie down in my bed. Psalms 4 verse 8, you know, I will lie in my bed and sleep in safety. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's what I have you to claim it. I said, and, I, and I have to be sensible. Yeah. You know, I was keeping all the things that I keep to, to build my immune system. And I said to people, you know, the, all the routines people were getting into, I said, that's my life. I'm in the hospital all the time. Once I come home, wash those hands, change your clothes. That's what, in the mach- for like a lot of us did that from that standard <laughs> right? stuff, innit? That yeah. was what I did. Yeah. And um, so it, it was coming to come. And I had to thank God. You know, I had friends who really stepped in and they will you know, do what I needed to, to do at the house, look over mm. this young lady so I can get out and get the stuff done. And even when we finally got it done, I was still self-critical, you mm. know, you remember. Yeah, of course, of course. Well, like, we're always going to be, I mean, everyone, it always goes through that thing where they're yeah. like, oh, I, this, I want to redo this and stuff. And, and, yeah. and we still did, obviously, we want to make it the best. So we mm-hmm. still re-recorded and, and fixed what mm-hmm. we wanted to fix and what you thought needed to change. Yeah. Um, and finally made it to a point where now you have the funding, the project is almost done. And how are you feeling? Because I, I think at this point now, or really closer to the end, mm-hmm. um, the house situation um, is a bit better. Yeah, I know that um, 
the person who was looking after kind of was able to like yeah uh, she's returned home and she's home. well and and mm-hmm. um you know other friends uh, uh, you know and as you know my house always has somebody mm-hmm. um so that that was nothing new just mm-hmm. to 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 stretch out your hand and make sure somebody has a place you know they're staying here young students um come over they're here you know that can, kind of can thing. i say as well you know this is what i just realized <laughs> is that the fact that i i strongly believe that the fact what you just said is so is so important. The way that you spoke about just you helping people and, and giving the helping hand all the time. Someone's always at your house, as you just said. Mm-hmm. I feel like that is why God's promise is, you know, it comes back. It doesn't return void, right? Mm-hmm. So you're you received that yourself when you needed funding that mm-hmm. was provided. Mm-hmm. When you needed a studio that yeah. was provided. Yeah. When you needed a, a producer. When you needed, um, you know, to to distribute the CDs and yeah. get offers and yeah. stuff like that. It was all it all happened <laughs> yeah. because naturally the way that you live you live according to the Bible. You stuck to that, so then it returned back to you, mm-hmm. and that's and amazing. I think, I think the the thing was not to doubt. So even as mm-hmm. you were doing the stuff, um, you know, and your your uncle would say, "We need this. We need that." You know, God just put the right person to get the right person to print the CDs. I had um, our dear John, mm, you know, coming mm-hmm. on to do, we were able to use one church and, you know. Even get video the, production, everything was sorted out. Yeah. You know, and it just all fell into place. And, and, I, and I keep saying, well, God bless me with the best tribe, you know, <laughs> um, around me. And I am really, you know, I just have to rejoice mm. about it. And then, of course, it came, you mm. know, when it finally came. And I think what I did, I know some of my friends were like, you didn't tell us, I couldn't. Mm. You know, God just said you you're doing this and i and i spoke to the people who were in the the circle doing the stuff yeah in the background and i i said to specific friends because they had always been pushing me to do it yeah i said pray about this it's you know it's going to come so yeah. it's like I, I, I and a group of us who are very close about 12 of us so they suddenly saw the link they're like and what? I'm shocked yeah so <laughs> but they, and, but they, you know what is good is that you fr- i have those people that are really happy for me and really mm. push me and without before i can finish speak they're like this is my address. Send me. What is the cost? Ready to you know? help. Ready to And, serve. and yeah. you know, up to yesterday, one lady just called and she said, you know, I, I see it's out now. Send me five copies or whatever. And so I know God is going to do what he has to do. Absolutely. With it. And I just want people to, to hear the words. And not so much the voice. But hear no, the words. the voice. In fact, so now, so we are now finally here. Yeah. All praises. I mean, you, you just, I think it was important that people heard where it came from. What is behind this whole project? And mm-hmm. now we're here, 20. 21 and finally um auntie luan has released the project Mm -hmm. you have released this project and what is the project talk to us about what what can we expect from the project so what are we what should people be looking forward to yeah so it's called dear lord Mm. this is based on a poem my mom had called at dawn and it's, it's like a prayer to god what she's thanking god for and so i had put the music to that and felt that that needs to be heard because yeah. you you want God to you know one of the things I talk is about check the mandarins of my mind set my sights to things above yes. and I think in the time that we are in you know coming out of this a, a lot of people couldn't cope with the lockdown story mm. and I remember one day one lady said to me how it is you seem to just be cool and having fun so I said yeah. lockdown has been my life for 20 something years mm. you're in the hospital wow. you're out the hospital you know you're losing your hair you're having shingles you have everything mm. you all know. these problems and so challenges you, and you're locked down you Literally. know, and when you, you know, and I think this really, the seed for this really came stronger in 2016 to 2017, you know, because 2016, I had like four or five general anesthetics mm. in hospital for six to seven weeks. You know, I, I had a lockdown birthday, I called it in 2016. Mm. 2017, I'm, I'm getting ready to, to, to go for a wedding and mm. I'm back in hospital. Again, I, this again was a, again. I'm dying now. And my friends were coming, leaving the hospital. You know, my adopted son said people are just crying when he, he sees them because they, it doesn't look like Luan is going mm-hmm. to make it. And, but I have, you know, in all of the, 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 the battling there, I just will turn in the night and said, I will not die, but live to proclaim the name Absolutely. of the Lord. And, and then, you know, and, and then I find something to laugh about. And yeah, so I just, just said, okay, it, it's going to happen. And the the songs, yeah. um, you know, and, and there are loads and loads of songs, but most of them are those tracks that my yeah. friends had done. Okay, so those tracks me. that you recorded way back in, what, 2006 so, from two, there? Well, some of the songs, yeah. The, the, yeah. So yeah, some okay. of those, yeah, 2000. 
No, no, this is about 2012. 2012, yeah. yeah. So some, so yeah. a lot of those are in this project. Yeah, so some of mm. those are the, 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 the tracks that I got my friends to do, um, particularly mm. the hymns. Yeah. Um, and as I said, they, they, they resonated particularly after my dad passed. And I felt that I needed to share those. And yeah. then others are covers that really have been in my life. You know, the, 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 the Dallas Home cover, Right, Just Never Forsaken, you know, based on Psalm 37, mm. 25. I think in my own life with everything that I've gone through, Mm. You know, um, even these years of not being in full employment, you know, God has still put me in places where I can, you know, I, I volunteer still in schools. I, I chair, you know, yeah, some yeah. CICs and, and, and do um, local trusty things for, for nonprofits. So all of the, you yeah. know, God's blessed my life, but you you don't know. You're thinking, how am I going to manage? Yeah. You know, and, and, and this this faith journey, which I call, you know, forward in all issues to heaven. Mm-hmm. Um. I, I had to just look back and I said, but, you know, I'm not being homeless. I'm not hungry. Mm. Never without clothes. I'm not forsaken. Yeah. And even when others forsake you, God has said, I will never leave you. So not forsake you. And and that's just, I mean, that's what I, I feel like it, from obviously hearing some of it, obviously being a part mm-hmm. of the process, mm-hmm. you, every song is a stage of your life at mm-hmm. some point and mm-hmm. and speaks about what you've been through, especially the way you sing it. Mm. That's why we have to listen to the voice <laughs> as well. But I mean, you know what I mean? Like even the lyrical, the way that you express your lyrics, the way you express yourself. Mm-hmm. And finally, it's it's on a project that people can mm-hmm. take home and mm-hmm. listen. Would you say would you say that people can take it home and listen to your story? Yeah. Yeah. And I think those those who have been acquainted with some things in my life could almost tell mm. what that song relates to mm. or what That's what special. it had the meaning, you know. And and it, it it wasn't just also about me. Sometimes with some of my friends' stories, you know, um, you you think they're going through this, and you may send a song, mm. you know, and just listen to that, you know, um, to lift you. So, you know, it it is the hope that in all of it. Um, people just get a blessing. People that, find yeah, yeah, Jesus. Absolutely. People feel that they can, you know, talk to God. Um, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. And 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 feel feel blessed by it. And I think it's it's more than just oh oh yeah, it was nice. It was mm. it was a blessing. Um, you know, I want people to be able to to resonate and feel hope. Mm. You know, have that kind of hope. That yeah, it's 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 especially in this time. Definitely, you know, because time. you know, part of the thing was I I one of my my high school friends was encouraging me, which which she encourages me mm-hmm. to write. A lot of people have been doing that, and and I've been writing. Mm-hmm. But when she said to me, "How is how is your book coming?" I just said to her, "Well, actually." It's the book in the form of a CD. Yes. She was like, she just, she, she literally so, called me. She was like, what? You know? Yeah. And I said, yeah, it, I think That's this beautiful. is, the, the, the music now is, is what has really kept me. Mm. Um, the this, this story will be there. I think I have to say like uh, that, that movie star who passed recently, Cece Tyson said, when I, when I have something to say, mm. I'll write it. Yeah, uh, I love that. Um, yeah, I have a lot to say. And so, uh, yeah, and so it's your book in the form Obviously. Yeah, I think and, so. And how many chapters do we have to listen to? Thirteen. Thirteen beautiful 13 chapters, chapters of your life. Yeah, and what you've gone chapters. through. Yeah. And and um, each of them, you know, have mm. have special meaning to me. And I just thank God, mm. you know, that it came through. It was for him, you know, uh, one of my songs that I like, which is not there, but you know, mm. he'll do it again. Mm. Um, and he will do it in his time, in his way. Mm. Um, he, and he does supply. Um, your needs so Absolutely. yeah and I Your had to just say, you know every night when, when my mom and I pray she, she's like yes Lord I'm remembering yes. you know Timothy and David and Noel and John and everybody who has been just you know Paul and you know all the people who just you know mm. came in at the right time and I think I think as well we have to acknowledge as much as you're acknowledging the people who have helped you in the process. Mm-hmm. I honestly believe that it's only been this way because of the amount you've poured mm. out into other people. Mm. You've mm. poured out so much. It's only right that the Lord said, "Yeah, I'm going to okay. return it to you," yeah. and not just return it to you anyhow. Mm-hmm. To the degree and the yeah. effort and the yeah. um, the investment that you've invested mm-hmm. in other people. Mm-hmm. So you've got. Um, 
the best people, the good quality and yeah. good production mm-hmm. and good recording. So mm-hmm. I feel like it ele- and elevates and even the, the quality of the project speaks highest about mm-hmm. who you are mm. and how you invest into people. Mm-hmm. And so where can we now find it? Because now we're, we're here, <laughs> we finally made it and we've right. got the project out. So, so dear I Lord, where can we find it's, that? It's, or it's streaming on all the digital platforms. I okay. was told, it was funny, I, I shared the link with some of my neighbours yeah. who I have, um, who who know that I sing. And all of a sudden, 10 o'clock in the night, one neighbour calls me and says, I'm listening to this thing on Apple Music. <laughs> I never knew you sang souls like this. I know you sing. And, you know, and he was all excited. And I said, praise the Lord, because I really wanted to impact... Mm-hmm. You know, not just people who say they know Christ, but yeah. people who really want to have a relationship yeah. um, with Christ. And so it's streaming on the platform. So, um, so we type in Dear Lord to find it on, is it, um, what's, I the, think, what's I think the title? It's, yeah, it's Dear Lord is the title of the yeah. album. So I know it's on Spotify and Apple Tunes. And, and I think your, And what's your website and as well? And my le- website is luansings.com. Luansings.com. Right, so okay. they can see the other links there. They can email me on the link to say they want to order. Fantastic. So for those in England, it is uh, twelve pounds, including posting and packaging. Mm-hmm. Some people know to find my house, so they will come yeah, and yeah, get yeah, it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, okay, perfect. Get those for ten pounds, um, and they they're working on on. I think in True CD Baby, you can get some of the distribution okay, um, yeah. in America Fantastic. and other platforms. So yeah, brilliant. The and what... physical one is there, and the plat the digital platforms are there. Perfect. So and people can they, get the physical they, and digital. They, um, the YouTube channel is there, so we need everybody to subscribe so, to the channel. So, and is the channel Luan Sings? Luan Sings, yeah. Luan Sings, so YouTube channel Luan Sings. Yeah. Um, we've got the website, luansings.com. Mm-hmm. Um, and all the information is also going to be in the description below. So mm-hmm. if you're definitely, please check it out. This is a story. This is a book. This is a <laughs> life story told in the form of music. Yeah. And to really take you through that, Please listen. Please subscribe. Yeah. Please support and and go through that journey. She's 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 literally taken the whole story, packaged it up for you to experience yourself. Yeah, I and just want to leave something with you. Yeah, for sure. Please stuff. give us a word so to, 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 to finish you know, it out. In 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 the chaos sometimes, and, yeah. and the chaos the house was in. You you, I was finding things that I hadn't um yeah. found, and this was something my dad had written years ago and left with us. Mm. And it says rules for daily living. Begin the day with God, kneel down to him in prayer, lift up thy heart to his abode and seek his love to share. Open the book of God and read a portion there, that it may hallow all thy thoughts and see you through the day. Go through the day with God, whatever thy work may be, where'er thou art, at home or abroad, he still is near to thee. Converse in mind with God, thy spirit heavenward raise. Acknowledge every good bestowed and offer grateful praise. Conclude the day with God, thy sins to him confess. Trust in the Lord's atoning blood and plead his righteousness. Lay down at night with God, who gives his servant sleep. And when you tread the rate of death, he will thee guard. And keep all praises. Right. That's so beautiful. this this just encourages me. I had to work mm. with the paper to read it. Um. But yeah, begin your day. Go through the day with God. Mm. End the day with God. Um. Mm-hmm. And you you know sometimes we feel it's hard. Yeah. Because of what you're going through, but I think when you know when Paul says you know be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you you know what I learned to do now is in <laughs> I I keep saying this my latest thing is I'm counting the blessings not the wrinkles, mm. but you know my my mom and my grand used to say you know yeah the sky is the, the night is dark but find the stars, you know in the darkness find the stars in the thunderstorms look for the rainbow. You know, look for light and, and, and look for love. Look for something good. You know, always have the eyes to see good for people. Mm. And, 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 you know, th- there's a thing that when you're in your darkest moments, you know, I, I think that is when my, my mom would always say that's when you have to praise and pray the loudest, mm. you know, and let the enemy know you're not afraid of the dark. I love you that. You know, so I, I have thanked God that, you know, people have been there in my life, sometimes when it comes down to it and you're alone, yeah. it's just the Father, Son, Holy Ghost and the angelic host, I tell people. Like <laughs> you know, that, yeah, that, yeah, that yeah, those yeah, are the, yeah. that's what keeps you going. Yeah, and, um, and, and even in little things, you, you know, you start seeing God in those little things. 
you know, and mm. then he manifests the, the big thing. All oh, praises. I mean, we can't close it out better than that. I mean, <laughs> thank you so much for coming and sharing your story. It's been very, very special. Yeah. Um, it's very. It's a pleasure to have you here and to yeah. finally have the life of Luan <laughs> in, you know, translated for us into music. And now yeah. we can listen to it. So everyone, please support mm. the family. And um, listen, thank you so much again. Thank you so and much, Tim. Please, if you want to get more, we're going to be doing more and more podcasts and having more amazing mm-hmm. people like um, Auntie Luan as well. And uh, we'll just continue to basically talk to people about the reality of how God actually lives mm-hmm. in your life, how to live out um yes. in faith and and how to how to experience the bible and not just sing and not just talk about mm-hmm. it but what it really means yeah, to people like yourself yeah, so i appreciate you for coming on again yeah. and everyone have a blessed day and we'll see you soon yeah. blessings Oh